it's going to be just a great year. Don't you think? I'm really excited. I'm starting my new year out in vintage. The good old times. Vintage because this is a what kind of vest? Crazy quilt vest. It's a crazy quilt vest. And actually, and I wore it many, many years ago. I have to show you the picture. But anyhow, um, I, I always wore outfits like this. And Brian told me, get dressed this way. He goes, oh my gosh, Al, you used to wear stuff like that all the time. Well, somebody actually asked me, Elle, who makes all your costumes? I said, they're not my costumes, they're my outfits. <laughs> and so maybe I was a little, I don't know if this ever buttoned, but it sure won't button now. <laughs> That's sign of the times, huh? Well, what a day I have planned, all starting with vintage crazy quilts. And then, of course, we're going to do one with um, the AccuQuilt cutter. You ready? Yes. So have you been looking at these quilts? Are they not beautiful? They are beautiful. And you know what's really fun about this one right up here? It's actually embroidered 1885. We could read that embroidery. But it's just so fun. It's, this is from the influence of the Japanese artwork and the English stitching. Back in, it was about 1875, they started doing this. And for almost a period of 50 years, they worked on it, and then that was it. They, of course, they never finished them. Look at this. Because, oops! <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> that didn't work, did it, Teresa? Oh, but that's really cool, because I'm just going to go over and show Eric this picture, because it's so much fun. They didn't finish them. But um, they never washed them either, and they never slept under them. They were just artwork. They were artwork, and the stitchery is beautiful. And some of them have symbols that mean things. And I would love you to figure out what this symbol might be. Eric, if you can just go real close. Is that cute? So. Two owls sitting in a tree, and one owl has on a band-aid, a bandage. Do you see that? Yeah. What do you think that's all about? Huh? So cute. So they were so fortunate. They had all of these beautiful pieces of silk and velvet, and the threads were incredible. But I want to show you the date because I see it right here. Here is the shield, the symbol, and if you read, let's see, if I tip it up a little bit, okay, can you read 1885? Right there. Is that incredible? And look at all of the beautiful work. Well, flowers have meanings. All of the flowers have some symbol that works really good. And what I love about this one, yeah. yeah. Oh, I just, this one is beautiful, and I really want to pull it over for you because this is very English. Yeah, these are very fragile, and look at me what I'm doing. I want you to look at the stitchery in this little work and see if you can tell me who the English artist was in the 1850s. Uh, doesn't have a name. Let's put it flat. There, can you see her? Wow. Yeah. I thought you'd all know. Kate Greenaway. Yeah. Don't you remember she did all of those beautiful children's illustrations? And so they took her illustrations and put them into the crazy quilt. It's just beautiful. Really fun. Oh, and this, we've got to show this one, Teresa. Oh, can we swing it around? Yeah, uh, these are all little Kate Greenaway as well. Is that gorgeous? And look at the stitchery. And I know the fan has a meaning, but I can't remember what it is. Anybody know who's it? the fan? Uh, it's the hot. <laughs> what did you say? It's hot. It's hot? I don't know. It's hot. <laughs> so use your fan. Oh, and there's a little bee in here. Just beautiful. I was so lucky. I opened my trunk in my living room 
and all of these were actually collected all together. So we know this one, the year is 1885, they worked on this, just bits and pieces. They gave up all of that beautiful symmetry of those stars and excellent rows and everything lined up and matching and said, we're going to go crazy. And you go, okay, that's a mental, must have been a mental issue. No, it comes from the Japanese word. It's actually crazing for the glazing on pottery that took on a cracked effect. So it really does have meaning. It goes back to a Japanese word. So it's just so fun. Okay, so we looked at this gorgeous one. Oh, there's an angel. Of course, we, have, we must know the symbolism of an angel, huh? And there's one here. It's a graveyard. They always did little crosses in graveyards, the angel. I know where that one is. Let's see if we can find it. It's, um, okay, here is our man. Okay, how are you doing, Eric? Are you getting all of these beautiful, are you doing good? Look at this one. He is standing in the graveyard. Can you see the little crosses? And I don't know, we had to make a lot of it up, but anyhow, over here, this is a bird. So we think that he worked maybe in the fields because here's the fence along the outside edge. And there's the flowers. We can make up all kinds of stories. That's really fun. Okay, so we're gonna take a look at this quilt over here while Teresa, now it's your turn. You get to set up the, <laughs> you get to set up the machine. Okay, so come with me over here. Thank you, Eddie. Um, this one is very special. I did get it in Solana Beach. People ask me where I got them. And what's interesting about it is that a lot of times crazy quilts just started in the middle and people just went crazy putting little pieces together from the center out. But this one is very organized in rows. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. And you're not going to believe this. Eddie is going to go really close for you. Do you know that in the late 1800s, they put little silk pieces in cigarette packages? And I'm sure it was the women that encouraged the men to smoke so they could get their silk patches. And Eddie's going to go real close, right on here, as close as he can. And is that as close as you can go? This is Daniel Webster. Do you believe that? Daniel Webster, and I think, and I decided, somebody embroidered a hat, so I think it's hats off to Daniel Webster. That makes a good story, right? It's obvious, okay? It's really obvious. And another one they always had was a spider web. And this kind of looks like a spider web, but I have seen, seen some really very intricate spider webs. One of them says freedom on it. And here's another gentleman. I actually have his um, name behind me. I can't remember it. But anyhow, these are from cigarette cartons. Interesting? Mm -hmm. Very, very pretty. And a lot of these uh, velvet, silks, plaids, um, beautiful stitches. I just love it. Little flowers. Really, really cool, huh? Okay, so I'm gonna go behind the table. I wanna show you this one. It's wool and very, very large squares. And what's unique about this one is that the quilt maker started with a square in every patch. And then she just built upon them. And these are fairly large patches and the yellow stitchery really shows up on it. Isn't it beautiful? Mm -hmm. I think it's gorgeous. And then she put the large blocks together and um, finished it like that. I think it's beautiful. This one does not have a backing on it. It wasn't finished. A lot of them were never finished. But it is wool and it's quite a collection. Beautiful. I love it. So now that you've seen all of the antiques, you want to see a new one? I know you can't wait, huh? I thought that, you know, I did not get my dye until I came back from Christmas vacation. 
and so I had to really hustle on it. <laughs> but I'm really quite excited. Are you ready? Yes. Ta-da! Oh. Isn't it cute? I think it's, it's really cute. These are the six inch blocks. There are six inch blocks and larger blocks. I'll show you both of the dies in just a minute. But um, there's 12 blocks in there and I thought instead of putting my blocks all together it would look too busy so I separated it with lattice and cornerstones. Very, very good, don't you think? And just a little border and binding. And when I looked at this, thank you, when I looked at this die on Monday morning of this week, I said, oh my gosh, I'm never going to get those little pieces done. But I took it home Monday night, maybe sewed about an hour and a half, two hours until I was exhausted. Finished the blocks Tuesday in another hour. Teresa put it together and Amy quilted it. It was the fastest quilt I think I've ever done. I'm serious. Almost in a day. Almost in a day. <laughs> you get to be Teresa, okay? Okay, so what's really fun about this line, okay, hold on to it. Mm -hmm. It's a feed sack reproduction line, and I totally enjoyed using it. Oh, she came back now. Okay, it's a feed sack line, and it has the coolest name. It's called Red Rover. Red Rover. Do you remember? Did you, did you play Red Rover? Red Rover, okay, Linda, you gonna play? Wait, don't go away, you're gonna play Red Rover with me. <laughs> okay, I don't know how. Okay. Oh, she doesn't know how. In Red Rover, you make, you make lines and you okay. hold tight. Okay. It's a daring game, right? Okay. You ready? Okay. <laughs> oh, you're going to do it? Okay. Red Rover, Red Rover, we dare Orion to come over. <laughs> no, you I'm can't. Go through. <laughs> you're supposed to, but you're supposed to break the hands. And so now, are you ready? You get the unveiling of the die. This is the six inch die. Teresa, could you go and get the 12 inch die behind me? I, I, mean the, the big one. Huge one is a 10 inch finish, but the it's The big a, one. This so one? there's two of them. But they're exactly the same, but I'm gonna um, only talk about the six inch. That's because there's less sewing, right? Yeah. Yeah. And it's really fun. Okay, so. The first thing I learned from one of the other patterns to put the letters on the die. Look, there's 10 different pieces. How can you remember all of that? And so I just took my um, marker. I wrote A, B, C, D, E, clear up to H, I, J. J, that's the last one. So do that. Okay, so if you're looking at your sheet, there, I wrote this down on the second page. And I, then I took this die and I photocopied this design on a piece of paper. Is that good? Yes. I knew I can't do that. And then I put it in a shallow box. Oh, am I smart? See, I've done it. So here it is right here all these little pieces and they're slipping just a little bit. I was trying to think you can't, it would be best if you could um, photocopy onto a piece of flannel so they didn't slide around, but I don't know how to do that yet. <laughs> so anyhow, this shows I took a stack of five 10 inch squares from my layer cake. And what was the name of that layer cake? Red Rover, I dare you. So anyhow, there's five here all in order. And so you should work in groups of five. And I'm just going to take my some of my other ones. See, this is Red Rover, the paper, so I remember it. So I decided to just put a nice stack like I and and work with the colors. So first I did red, then green, then blue. I thought, okay, I don't want to put them all together. 
I did another red and green. This is the rest of my layer cake I'm running out. So I have just five here, I believe one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so just put them onto your die. And I made sure that you guys know this is my method. <laughs> and that's why I wrote quilt in a day up at the top. So some of it is AccuQuilts. This is what I decided to do. You could do all little pieces if you want. That's okay, but just go this way, right? Go big. So cover it with your mat and just push it through. Ooh. I forgot one thing. I have to put it through again because this, there are so many little pieces and little sections in here. Oh, I hope I cut it good. Because I found out that if you try that and it doesn't work, if you get little threads that aren't cut, you should put a paper on top, on top of the mat. And it's just a little bit of thickness that helps push the mat down into the die. And now I'm afraid if I do it again, it, it'll screw up. Don't do it again. Don't do it again. <laughs> but anyhow, remember, and I wrote this on your paper, if you try some scrap pieces and you have little threads, then just go ahead and try that paper on top. And it's like O'Ryan said, oh, we have lots of that. And this is the next part. Really, I always tell you to spin your mat but this is one block. You do not want to mess up the pieces, right? I always do these things first so I can tell you what not to do. I learned from experience. Yeah, I did that pretty good, huh? Whoa, okay. So then the next tricky thing, you need to always have a piece, a pair of scissors handy, a pair of scissors and just in case there's a little bit of thread, and I told Teresa, oh, this is gonna be so slow for me. I just won't be able, okay, there's a little thread right in the corner. It's like one little thread, and so you just have to clip it, and you just have to pull up very carefully. Now I wish we had um, some fast forward going on. But make sure that you keep all your little pieces nice and flat. Just kind of hold on to them and work. Okay, ask me a question if you want to know. It's going to take me a second to go through. I, I would not recommend more than five. And actually, I did four one time, and it worked really good. So let me see. You actually need a total of 12. Ten. No, there's 12. You're make, if you're making 12 blocks, how, whatever number of blocks you're making, that's the number of squares that you need to do. So if you're only gonna do like a little six block quilt, then you just go ahead and just put in um, six, and then you'll get, you'll get, um, you'll get enough for six blocks. You get 10 of six blocks, right? And it'll go together. I wish I would have used my paper. Highlight that in your pattern. So basically, if you're doing 12 blocks, you need 12 squares. If you're doing 15 blocks, you need 15 um, a squares, you know, ten, ten, because ten inch squares. Yeah. Every one cuts all the color, all, all the pieces on it. Okay, and so now, if you want, would you hold up the big one again? Okay. So you can do exactly the same thing. This is called the version. Everybody, pay attention to Teresa while I finish this. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 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 So, so this is the same. It it's exactly the same, but Perfect. now you need to have a 13 and a half inch piece a square. of fabric. And then one for each. Okay, I'm yeah. getting it. I so had lots of little so. threads. 
And I will tell you, I have experimented with the size, of, with the weight of the paper. Orion kind of gave me some cardboard, but my AccuQuilt machine did not like the cardboard. Just a piece of regular paper. Ah, and you'll see as soon as I get this off that it's, um, it's a, a die that has a lot of little space in between, and that's what makes it kind of hard. Okay, put a pin. Okay. All right. So, so look what happens. Woo! Oh, you have one piece there. Yes, I have two, two. pieces. Oh, nice. <laughs> Woo! There you go. Scraps! Give them to Brenda. <laughs> okay. Okay, so now I'm going to take my little box and besides putting the um, drawing or photocopying A, of course you're going to cover up A, so you have to write a little A in the outside, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, and so I'm just going to turn it so it's the same way. And so there, I'm just going to stack these pieces very carefully on top. Good? Okay. And so, I know Teresa's going to line them up all very nice. And now I'm going to go to my sewing machine. Okay? Right. Now I need, I need to have A and B. Okay? I have A and I have B. So you can go to the inside paper. So now I'm going to take A and leave it like it is, but I'm going to take B and put it on the bottom of the stack. One. Only one. Okay, only one. Because we're going to, now it's all going to be messed up and now the colors aren't going to be beside each other. Right? right. Yes! Yes, ma'am. Okay, and so I, I do need my stiletto, Teresa. <gasps> I don't have to think twice because I have a stiletto on one side and I have a ripper on the other side. Wow. That's, that's cutting your thinking process down right away, right? There it is. Okay, so when you pick these two up, it's interesting. Can I do these now? Yeah, so Teresa is going to just go through. Now so I'm she, doing two. She's going to pick up C, and she's going to take two and put it on the bottom. Mm -hmm. And then that's C, and then she's going to go to D, and what's she going to do? Three. Three. Okay, so when you put it, this is the great thing about AccuQuilt. Do you see how... This lines up straight at the top, and this is square at the bottom. And that's what you're going to find with every one of these pieces. They kind of line up in different ways, but this one, A and B, lines up like that. And I just put them close to my sewing machine, and I assembly line sew all A and B. And I hope that they're going to be different every time whenever you, different colors, whenever you pick it up. Hopefully, huh? So far, so good. Because I've been known to just pick up a piece and toss it, <laughs> and then put it on the bottom. But um, in theory, theory, you're supposed to keep them in order, exactly like this. And do I have an iron, Teresa? You will. I will? <laughs> I just needed to do these. Okay, there you need, it is. You need it. Okay, there now, that. now let's look and see. Eric, every single one is different on the top. Is that cool? That's very cool. Okay, so I like to work uh, doing all of them, and I will show you what I've done. Do you all have a pencil? Yep. Got to get a pencil because I want to show you, I decided to press my seams in one direction. 
And so right here is A, B. Can you get that, Eric? A, B. Uh-huh, A, B. I'm going to press my seam towards A. So I've just drawn this little tick mark toward A. Toward A. Okay, you, you are given permission. Right now, this is the first time I've ever opened an AccuQuill pattern that the instructions were not inside. I don't know if this is a new thing, but they give you their website and what number to put in. Basically, it's the number of this die, which I believe is 552 something. Uh, it says 55226. So now there aren't directions, but when you go in there and download it, this is what you find. So I just decided to give you guys, help you guys out and put it together. So now it says at the top of your sheet, AccuQuilt. This is all straight from AccuQuilt. It saved Merit some time of which we've been really, really busy. So I'm just about done with A, B, whoops. I have two there. So what do you think about the quilt behind me? Isn't it cute? I think it would be a darling baby quilt. And Brenda just told me before we started that um, she is working with the large one in flannel. And um, okay, so you're always supposed to do these right. So what did I do? You're supposed to do, do them the same. Just follow them along there. Oh, good, and is my iron getting hot? It's getting hot. Okay, I want it hot, baby, because it's nearly done. It's interesting, you know what, in my stack, I did not pick up the same one, the same color at all. And this is exactly what I did when I sat and sewed. Oh, the last one, I lied. <laughs> But they're different, huh? But still it would look pretty spotty in the quilt if I left this like that, huh? Okay. I'll have to <laughs> do something different, huh? Okay, so anyhow, now I have, and this is the system that I follow every time, I have all um, 12 lined up in a row. I'm going to press my seams toward A, and so always, Whenever I'm going to press a seam a certain way, I put that letter on the top. And I just, I leave it all chained together. I find it works really fast. And this is also a really good check. If you're pressing along and they're all the same, you did it right. Yes, so then if I'm pressing toward A, I just pick up A and go straight into it. Um, I decided instead of pressing these seams open, it would take me way too much time. And so I just am pressing in one direction towards that little letter. Okay, and then, is that cool? Look at that. One more, two more, the one on the floor. <laughs> okay, so we have that. And then once I have them all pressed, and I do highly recommend that you press as soon as you sew it, so you don't get confused. And that was the one thing Brenda said to me. Yep, you can get confused very easily. Get that little sheet sheet. Okay. And so, Teresa, I'm going to let you finish this. Finish cutting it apart. But you have that one on top, on the bottom. Yeah, it's okay. So now, okay, so if you, you want me to keep the one in the, um, you want me to reverse it. Ah, oh, I could have done to, it. Okay. Need. Yeah, I need to. So you can just put it back on your photocopy sheet. Is that good? Yeah. yeah. It's easy now, huh? Mm -hmm. And so now you're just going to go ahead and pick up C. And I'm just going to do one, and you're just going to take it and flip it right sides together. This is C, and that says step 
six. Step six, and I want you to notice that you are going to press both of your seams toward A. Okay? You're getting homework. Okay, Teresa, yes. I, I want you to come over yes. and, okay, so what, lower the presser foot. I always forget. Okay, so this is C. And you would do all of those right in a row. And now you press it towards, set the seam with this, with it's actually you'd set it with green on the top so that you can press them all in the same direction okay a b c and that's the first section done yay, yay. are you happy and here is the block and this is a b c a b c and now i'm just going to take d and e and let me tell you of any of them d and e totally blew me away and I had to unsew. So look at D and E. It's that little, it looks like, um, it looks like a little rocket ship or something taken off. Okay, so then you're just going to take and press this one and see you have matched this edge here and this one here. Good? Are we good? Are we good? Are you keeping up with me? Okay, so Teresa, I am just going to keep on sewing. I'll give you the scissors and you can clip, clip it off. Okay, that is D and E, and I want you to press the seam towards D. Okay. Okay? Okay. D. F and G. Okay, you marking? Okay, what's the next letters? F, F and G. And see how it looks? Watch, when you flip it right sides together, you have two little, the top and the bottom just line up. They just line up, so I'm gonna assembly line, sew that one on. Ooh, and see, I'm just not gonna do all the letters, aren't you glad? I'm not going to sew all of them. Okay, turn the page. Okay, G and F toward F. Toward F. So then there's H and I on the next page. H and I. And it lines up again. H and I. This is perfect. See the little edge there and the edge right there. Lines up perfect. Okay, you keeping up with me, Teresa? I am. I'm lining it up right here for you. Oh, good. Okay, H and I. And then you need to give this one back to me. Which one? Because I think that you're going to add J right on to it, right? H and I towards I. But um, my f before that one, it's, um, where do I press these stores? <laughs> I guess I should have my Okay, let me see. One. That one is, um, you would press it towards F. The little, it's not in there. I had no. to, okay, oh. you know why you have to draw those in there? It Press it towards F, the bottom, Which, little bottom one. one. Uh-huh. Yes, that one. Okay. The reason that you have to do this is because we downloaded from AccuQuilt and we and my artist could not draw on these pages. Um, That's why you're doing it. Oh, I'm keeping you busy out and in, there, and in right? Testers. And then you have to give me that one back because I have to put J on there. Okay. And you're pressing in step 10 towards J. And that's how it's going to look, like that, like that. And you just flip it, you're pressing towards this one, okay? Okay. Are you getting confused, you guys? 
You're with me? Oh, good. And so this is what I was doing um, that just took me, um, I don't know, maybe two hours, and I was doing it in my sleep, so <laughs> it was good. Okay, so now this is the second half, and we're just going to continue to build right now. This is what I have done. I will show you. I have this much done. I need my scissors to clip right there. And you're going to press toward J, right? This is J. Put J in the top and press it open, OK? And this is where we are right now. We have this much done, this much done. And now we're on step 11. And we're going to add G and F. Oh, look, she's got it all laid out. OK. Look at that. It's correct. <laughs> this is good. That's good. This is good. OK, we don't know what happened. But this is how you do it. <laughs> OK. Oh, can I use your seam ripper? Can I use your seam ripper? Oh, yes. Oh, Would you like to try my seam ripper? Thank you. OK, there you go. Perfect. OK, Perfect. so now go to step 11. You have G and F, and you're pressing it away from F. Step 11, right? So you're going towards, towards I. Towards I, right? We're nearly done. And then step 12. You're pressing your seam towards D. <laughs> Step 12 toward D. Just draw your little thing toward D. Oh, we, t we said 11. Oh, towards I. Thank you. Step 12 towards D. We're nearly done. <laughs> Okay, you with me? Yep. Step 13? Yep. Okay. You press away from, you press towards this whole bottom thing. You press toward A, B, C. There. There. Good. There. It was just a reverse. Why is this reverse? Oh, there it is. <laughs> There, you go. there. Okay. Look how cute it is. Yeah. It's all primary colors. It's like just there like the is. primary colors that you use in grade school. Mm -hmm. Doesn't it look like a box of crayons? Mm -hmm. It's just like a box of crayons with all those beautiful colors. Cool. Okay. So you want me to sew that Will one you together? Please? Okay. Thank Would you. that make you feel better? Yes. <laughs> Thanks Good. for letting me borrow your strip, seam ripper. And how did you like that? I love it because I took all the, my little threads with the bottom of this. Oh, I you didn't have any know threads that. Out. That was very cool. <laughs> I did not know yeah. that. Cool, that's cool. Okay, so we've got this one done. And the reason that I showed you all of this is because I wanted them to just Every time I sewed over a piece, I wanted the pieces to be going down. That way you don't have to fight any seams. Ah! No fighting seams. Wrestle. No, don't wrestle. Nestle, right? And actually, I said nestle, but there is no matching seams on this. There are no matching seams. Just every seam was pressed down away, so you could assembly line sew and just fly. You make two units like this. That is really pretty that it's Teresa pretty. has, it, has is. It. it is pretty, isn't it? Yeah. it it's go. just really fun. And so then all you have are these two halves that you have to put together. And whenever you line them up, you see this one lines up right at the top. Like that. This lines up at the top like that. And look at the bottom. See how it lines up? So it's perfect. And 
the larger one is exactly the same way that you just you just um, have larger pieces, more sewing. So Brenda, did you actually start to sew on your pieces? Yep. She cut, Brenda cut 30 blocks out of flannel. Mm -hmm. Okay. And basically Brenda, she's saying that she used uh, flannel and cut two uh, 10 inch squares because the thickness of flannel. Yeah. Oh, only two, two, two squares. squares. Yeah. Two squares. Okay, well, I have to unsew too. Ooh, I get to try out my new seam ripper. Okay, whenever I laid that out, I did not flip it right. And then I really even went crooked. <laughs> don't go close on this, Eric. You don't want to show anybody this. But it would make everybody feel so good how crooked I did. Okay, so whenever you lay this out, so that you don't fight the seams, you have the larger half on the left and the smaller half, ABC, on the right. So when you flip them right sides together, it's just like I told you, the seams are all going down. On the back side, the seams are all going down, okay? So now I'm just going to take this and see if I can get this sewn back on there. Okay, and now, Teresa, we need to have a six and a half inch square up ruler. Six and a half? Uh -huh. Or I guess I, I can could. You can do them. I could. Uh, do nine a square up? Yeah. Yeah, That's nine and I a half do. inch ruler okay. would be really good. Nine and a half inch. Okay. AccuQuilt did not recommend squaring up. Eleanor Burns recommends squaring up. <laughs> it's because I did it. Oh my gosh. I just said, oh, I, I, this is so wonky. I've got to make them really beautiful. So with this one, the last seam, pretty, pretty. I love it. Set the seam open and press. And that doesn't look too bad, but a little wonky, don't you think? A little crazy. <laughs> a little crazy. Very, very crazy. And so I think that six and a half, um, it's supposed to be a six and a half, but personally, mine were more, oh, that's, that's actually not bad, but it's only six and a fourth on one side. This is six and a half this way. Can you see that on the rolls on the? And this is definitely a little crooked right over here. I show you can see that sticking out, right? And but it's only six and a fourth down here. So I'm just going to take and sliver trim two sides. Make them straight. See how little you trim? Mm -hmm. Take this corner, I trim two sides, turn this around, and now put six and a fourth on all sides. Six and a fourth right down here. Okay, that's looking good. Six and a fourth, six and a fourth, six and a fourth. I gotta push that up. Okay, now it's a lot better. And then when I, when I um, set the blocks together, then, whoops, see what I, <laughs> I don't know where I'm going. Okay, see what I trimmed away? Not much, not much. And that's what the block looks like. Ta-da! Cool. Okay. So on this pattern, it says, it shows actually putting um, block to block to block, 16 blocks. But as I said, we just downloaded this from AccuQuilt. Your yardage chart on the front is for this quilt on the back. And it's very easy to do in rows of three across and four down. My cornerstones are one and a half inches. Cute. 
one and a half. The strip is one and a, one and um, a half inches wide and cut your lattice to the size of your block. Okay, maybe you'll have a perfect six and a half inch block, but I didn't. So my lattice is six and a fourth inches um, around. And then I did just a little narrow border and then a wider border. And that yardage that I did is all on the front. How's that sound? Good? Look, and then it's, I love it quilting, easy binding. I really enjoyed it. Well, a couple of years ago, Quilt in a Day, we, we did a crazy quilt as well. And now I'm going to switch. This is actually what Quilt in a Day did, all rotary cutting. And this is our pattern uh, from Quilt in a Day. It's called Two Crazy Quilt. And Teresa's mom did this quilt. Teresa did the piecing from the quilt in a day pattern. And then her mom did all beautiful decorative stitches on top. It's kind of more like my vest, right? Right? Pardon me? Um, these are... These are, a lot of them are by hand. I and see. Some are from by hand and some by by machine. I uh, can see that. With a ribbon or so on. Yep. And if you do this kind of thing for crazy quilting, I recommend you press your seams open. Oh. And this is a larger block. This is quilt in a days. And instead of 10 pieces, quilt in a day only has six. Six pieces, and do you have that pattern sheet that oh, Merrick oh, did? Yeah. Thank you. I'm okay, like, oh. and so this is what the pattern sheet in Quilt in a Day and it's in the middle does. Of the yes, pattern. and it's included in the middle of the pattern. And you can also put a 10 inch square on top of this one. And then all it is is rotary cut down through the middle. And then you have three pieces on the first half and three pieces on the second half. And they go together exactly the same way. And so it was just really fun to do, to make. And um, I, I have to look and see what year I did this. Because, because Ten years I... Ago. Ten years ago? Yes. Oh my goodness, 10 years ago, because um, I did it, I did it this way. There was um, another quilt that hanging I, there. That I just taught you. And so there's all, oh yeah, that's really fun. Is that the, the front one? No. No, it's not. The yeah. Front. So with bigger pieces, it's easier to do all of your decorative embroidery stitches or your stitches by hand. Oh my goodness. And see, this has hunks of lace, just like my vest. This one actually has beads sewn on top. Sewn on top. I'll stand still, Eddie, if you want to go. And buttons, antique buttons you can do. Mm -hmm. I didn't think with my little six-inch block I could really do too many of those stitches. What do you think <laughs> of my Red Rover? So anyhow, I just think it's so much fun to make crazy quilts. So you go crazy and have fun. <laughs>